It has been almost two weeks since I saw that game live, and I am still somewhat in awe of what I witnessed. Patrick Mahomes is a fucking Terminator, I swear to God, he really is. I mean, you give that dude an inch, and he will take an entire mile. Just the sheer inevitability of him winning games like that one, despite all the odds being stacked against him, it's almost horrifyingly predictable at this point. Also, by the way, welcome back to Nighttime Down at my mini bar. It's been a while since we've done an episode down here like this, but it's back by popular demand because you guys love it so much. And, uh, you know, tis the holiday season, which means it's about that time for Patrick Mahomes to stop losing football games. And I mean that literally. It has been almost three calendar years at this point, actually more than three calendar years, since he has lost a single game in November or December, which is kind of absurd. And in order for me to explain how he plans to keep that now 26 game winning streak going, you first need to understand a few different things about this Chiefs offense, namely personnel and play calling, and also some of the ways that Patrick Mahomes himself has become a better quarterback this year, if you can believe that. Yes, he actually did have some flaws, and he seems to have fixed them, which is also kind of terrifying. But uh, anyway, for now, Go sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink, and uh, let's get into the nuts and bolts of what makes this 2022 Chiefs team so damn good. In a philosophical shift that should shock absolutely nobody this year since Tyreek Hill was traded away, the Chiefs have dramatically de-emphasized 11 personnel looks this season, and instead they've opted to mix in a lot more 12 and 13 personnel looks. And for those of you not familiar with personnel grouping terminology, the short version of that is the Chiefs are using three receiver sets a lot less, while using groupings with two or even three tight ends on the field together a lot more. 36.4% more, to be exact. That's how much they're using multiple tight end sets, which is an 11.4% increase year over year. Now, you might think that these heavier personnel groupings are being used because they want to run the ball a lot more this year to take pressure off Mahomes, but not really. They still pass about 64% of the time from 12 personnel looks with two tight ends, and they pass 60% of the time from 13 personnel looks with three tight ends. Overall, the Chiefs are 29th in the NFL in the percentage of their total plays being runs at just 36.9%, which is roughly in line with every other season in KC during the Mahomes era, but still certainly a lot lower than most people probably expected going into this season. So, if this team doesn't really lean on their wide receivers as much, but they also don't lean on their run game, what do they lean on? Well, the answer is threefold. Number one, they rely on man-breaking route concepts like mesh and drive to scare defenses out of just playing man coverage all day. Number two, once teams are out of that man coverage, they hit them with basically the modern interpretation of the old Y-cross concept to punish a variety of different zone looks. And then number three, when all else fails, Pat Mahomes' legs will usually do the rest, both inside and outside the pocket. Let's start with number one, those man-breakers. Kansas City has faced the fifth most cover one this season out of every team in the league at a whopping 25.8%, and on third down specifically, those man coverage looks go up to 37.3%, which I know still sounds low, but relative to the rest of the NFL, that is a lot of man coverage for one offense to have to face. So knowing that they're going to be seeing a lot of man every single week for a variety of different reasons, to be honest, Andy Reid has continuously dialed up a bunch of different concepts that, schematically speaking, obliterate those man coverage looks. Things like mesh concepts, drive routes, little flat routes off a of pre-snap motion so the defender is kind of caught flat-footed in no man's land because he's trying to adjust to the motion, all of a sudden the ball is snapped and he's way out of position, or even a whole host of other things like switch releases and rub routes that just make it extremely hard for DBs to stay in phase with their receivers. Most of these throws don't go for a lot of yardage, typically, but they do generate a ton of conversions on third downs and basically act as an extension of KC's non-existent run game just to keep the chains moving. And defenses do get frustrated by these concepts enough that they will start to call more quarters coverage and cover two to combat them, which then brings us to our second main point. Once defenses start to play more zone, especially zone coverages that are known as middle field open coverages where there's going to be two high safeties but no defenders in the deep middle of the field, 
hence calling it middle of field open. That's when the Chiefs love to call a whole bunch of different variations of what is essentially the old Y cross concept from every air raid offense ever, just with a new coat of paint on it. Here's how it works. Typically to the boundary side of the field or the short side of the field, whatever you prefer to call it, there's gonna be a high-low route combination of some kind. It can be smash, it can be smash return, it can be gaudy, just anything where there's a receiver in the flat pulling a defender down to him and then another receiver 15 to 20 yards deeper down the sideline stressing that boundary safety. Typically in most middle of field open coverages like cover two or quarters, the defense will be in some kind of three over two triangle coverage or a four over three box coverage, depending on where the passing strength of the offensive formation is, of course. Every defense is a little bit different. They all have their own trips checks. They all have their own way. They like to call their defense to the boundary. I'm not even going to try to explain all those different calls in detail because to be honest, it doesn't really matter for this particular video, but suffice to say that most of the time, if there's only two receiving threats to the boundary side, they will play something like cover two read, which most people know as palms coverage. Again, the specifics of how to play palms rules are not really important today. What is important is that the Chiefs use two receivers in a high-low route combination to draw three or more defenders to that side with those palms coverages in response. Because if that boundary side safety is moved out of the way by that route combination, the deep middle of the field is totally open for business. That's when the slot receiver on the other side of the field will be running a middle read route that can fly straight into that void with absolutely nothing but green grass in front of him. That read route is crucial because it can become anything the Chiefs need it to be in that moment. If that receiver is reading the safeties playing quarters, he can turn it into a nod post that wins across that safety's face and runs to daylight, just like you see here. However, conversely, if you look at the Bucks game earlier in the year where they ran this same concept, but just from a different formation with a slightly different route distribution, that read route was run differently because the coverage was different. On that play, Tampa Bay was, ironically, in a Tampa 2 look, so Marquez Valdez-Scantling didn't run a post, he just ran straight up the seam and Mahomes drilled the ball right to him against a linebacker. Again, this concept might look entirely different, but it's really not, it's just a post-snap read. Hell, even against a middle field closed look like either cover three or cover one man coverage, where the middle of the field is closed down by a deep center field safety, that read route can just convert in front of the safety's face like a deep crossing route instead in order to find that open space. Though, to be honest, every time the Chiefs even run this play against cover one, Travis Kelsey gets open anyway, so that read route kind of becomes an afterthought no matter what. But you get my point. This concept and other concepts like it allow the Chiefs incredible flexibility in terms of how they take their shots down the field against various defensive looks. And the fact that Mahomes can just sit back there in the pocket and wait for his slot receiver to read the defense and then run to space, that also frustrates the hell out of defensive coaches, and rightfully so, because now they can't reliably call man coverage because they're going to get hit with mesh all day, and they can't reliably call zone coverage either because they're going to get hit with deep shots. So what are they actually supposed to do? Well, when those defensive coaches get frustrated, historically, almost all of them invariably turn to one thing and one thing only to fix all of their problems, pressure. Patrick Mahomes has thrown the 12th most passes this year against five or more pass rushers. And if that seems like a lot more than usual, well, it is. He was 28th in passes against the Blitz last year, 20th the year before that, and 25th the year before that in 2019. Teams are really coming after him more than ever this year, but unfortunately for those defenses, all of that pressure hasn't really worked because of point number three, Mahomes' legs. And believe me, it's not just in the way you think. In terms of passing attempts where a quarterback is moved off his spot and he has to get away from pressure, Mahomes leads the league by far in 2022 at 103 attempts under pressure already, which is 32 more than second place on the list, Josh Allen. The Chiefs' offensive line has also allowed the sixth most cumulative pressures in the NFL at 158, which is highly concerning in its own right. However, despite Mahomes having to run so much, he's only taken 17 total sacks this year, which is all the way down at 25th in the league. Mahomes has been simply remarkable at not only avoiding pressure or getting out of the grasp of tacklers and running for first downs with his feet, 
but he's also seemingly dramatically improved at the subtleties of pocket presence and helping his offensive line to not give up sacks. It wasn't too long ago where I sat at this very table and explained how Mahomes' tendencies to drop recklessly deep in the pocket, I'm talking like 10, 11, 12 yards deep, that would put his offensive line in horrible spots and give his tackles really tough angles to work with, and it made life so much harder on him than it needed to be. But now, he's not really doing that anymore. He's sticking to a 7, 8, maybe 9 yard depth at max, and it's really helping out his offensive line to not have terrible pass protection angles, and it just makes everybody's jobs a little bit less stressful. They might still give up plenty of pressure, but it's just the fact that those angles are a little bit more favorable, it just means that Mahomes can step out of that pressure a little bit more consistently, actually a lot of bit more consistently than he used to. He's grown, he's developed, and he's fixed that one area of his game that, in my opinion, he still really needed to fix. The arm is still the same, the accuracy is still the same, the instincts and the field vision are still the same, but that singular problem that Mahomes always had, which is pocket manipulation and drop depth, that is now a strength instead of a weakness. And quite frankly, because that issue is gone, I'm not really that surprised that he was able to come back and beat the Chargers that night. I'm not surprised that the KC offense, statistically, has not fallen off at all without Tyreek Hill. I'm not surprised that Travis Kelsey is once again putting up record numbers. And I'm not surprised that despite the rest of the AFC West spending $616 million since the end of last season to catch up to the Chiefs, they still haven't even come close. None of that is shocking, because at the end of the day, Patrick Mahomes is just that damn good. Now, you may be asking yourself, uh, okay, is there any way we can actually use this information? Is there anything we can actually apply all of this nerdery and research to? And the answer is yes, uh, we can actually go try to make some money with it. And I tend to do all of that with all of my research that I do on these episodes every single week by filling out Pick'ems over on my partner, Underdog Fantasy. I have played with them for years now. They are great friends of mine. The company is run by great people. And also, you know, Pick'ems, I'm... I'm not bad at those. I think my winning rate is like 70%. And I built a, a pick'em slip specifically for this Bengals Chiefs game this weekend based on everything that I've researched for this offense and also everything that I've researched on the Bengals defense and how they like to play against offenses like Kansas City. And so you're looking at that slip right now and this is everything that, uh, that I've chosen for this slip based on data and based on film study. The Bengals, as a defense, don't really major in any specific coverages, but they're above average in terms of running cover one at about 21% of their total snaps, and they run the eighth most cover two in the league at about 16%. As we talked about earlier, the Chiefs love to bust up cover two with those Y cross concepts, as well as other little cover two beaters, so I have Mahomes going over 310.5 passing for obvious reasons. I also have Travis Kelsey over 83 and a half receiving because there is nobody on the Bengals roster who can handle him in all these man coverage looks. And I have Juju over 53 and a half because I think every time since he plays quarters or cover three, just as kind of their off speed pitch, I think he is going to slice and dice them with little stick routes and slants and hitches all day long to kind of be their de facto run game. Now, on the positive side for the Bengals, they do play a lot of 4-2-5 nickel on defense, and especially against 12 and 13 personnel looks from the offense, they are really, really good at stopping the run from that nickel package. Just look at the Titans game as an example. Personnel-wise, their offense in Tennessee is deployed very similarly to KC in terms of how often they use multiple tight end sets, and the Bengals handled that run game pretty easily from that nickel package. So I just think for a combination of factors, both being the Bengals run defense is great and the KC rushing offense is kind of non-existent at times. I took the under on Isaiah Pacheco here, which I know it seems like a pretty low over under, but I don't know, the matchup just isn't great. And then I also took the over on Evan McPherson just to round out this slip because I think the Chiefs defense will probably give Cincy three to four red zone possessions to work with which I think McPherson can obviously capitalize on. If you think my logic is sound here and you want to tail this slip, uh, obviously you can go to Underdog Fantasy to do that. Promo code BRETT, by the way, at the link down in the description will double your deposit up to $100. So whatever you deposit can be 10 bucks, 20 bucks, even up to 100 bucks, they will double that and you can use it 
however you want to on the platform. Uh, or if you think I'm a fucking idiot and you want to completely fade the slip, you can do that too. I'm, I'm not going to besmirch you. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Uh, if you're still here, thank you for watching the show. Really appreciate it. And uh, for you know helping the algorithm and all my retention statistics, I'm going to reward you for still being here with a recipe for a winter old-fashioned. I got this recipe down in New Orleans at uh, one of my favorite bars on planet Earth. It's the Sazerac Bar in the Roosevelt Hotel uh, just off Canal Street. Amazing bar, amazing drink. And, uh, you know, go make it for your office holiday parties or make it for yourself. I don't care. Either way, uh, really damn good drink. Go enjoy it. And uh, I'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.